Wireshark is a packet sniffing program that network administrators can use to isolate and troubleshoot problems on the network. It can also be used by someone with malicious intent to eavesdrop on network communications and capture sensitive data like usernames, passwords, the types of websites that people are visiting and the types of things they're looking at, their email, all kinds of things. So Wireshark can be used in a very positive way to help troubleshoot network problems, or it could be used in the wrong hands to eavesdrop. Let's see how this works. I have a diagram that I've created here to show you the scenario. The scenario is this. This is my computer in the center, Dan's computer, and I have two network connections. I have a wireless connection going this way, and I've got a wired connection going this way. I can use Wireshark to capture traffic crossing either one of these network interfaces. So all traffic that leaves my computer on this network interface wirelessly, I could capture. Also traffic that comes across my interface from the network coming into the interface, I could capture that as well. Also, same thing with this network connection. So what I want to do is, is I want to generate some traffic from my computer and I'm going to send and receive data and then I'm going to capture that data and take a look at that data. The protocols that we'll be analyzing are Telnet, SSH, FTP, and HTTP. And FTP and HTTP connections will happen off the internet and the Telnet and SSH connections will be happening from a router that I'm going to connect to and then I'll capture that traffic as it leaves my computer and then also as it returns. So this should be a fun exercise and show you a little bit about how Wireshark works. So Wireshark's really easy to use actually. All you have to do first of all is tell it which interfaces you want to capture. So if I'm going to let's say Telnet into the router, I'll go up here and I'll say capture interfaces and then I've got to pick the correct interface. Now I have a bunch of virtual interfaces here so I have to first of all look closely at which interface I want to use right now. So my wireless connection that's for going out to the internet. Right now my local area connection, my gigabit network connection is the one I want to use and you can see traffic flowing across it a little bit right now but this is the one right here gigabit network connection. So I'm going to select it and I'll press start and now I'll start capturing traffic on that interface. So now what I can do is I can get a connection. So what I'll do is I'll open up PuTTY and I'll Telnet into the router. So I'll choose Telnet from PuTTY and I'll put in the IP address of the router 192.168.0.1. Now I'm capturing all of this traffic right now. So here is the Telnet session. I'll put in my username which is admin and then I'll put in my password Cisco 12345 and you can see I just got into the router. Now I'll go to privilege user mode, enable and I'll put in the next password which is Dan's courses and now I'm in privileged user mode and I could start executing commands like show me the IP routing table or something like that, right? Okay, so now I'm done, so I'm going to stop capturing. So I'll press the stop button here, and you can see that I've captured just a ton of packets here. See that? All these packets here. Now, let's say I was um, snooping or eavesdropping on the network, and I'm interested in possible uh, network management connections and usernames and passwords and seeing if somebody was using a protocol like Telnet which is not encrypted and would possibly give away that information. So all I'd have to do is go really quickly here and say I'm interested in the Telnet protocol and this is my filtering tool right here. See it says filter so I put in Telnet click apply and it'll isolate only the packets that are using the Telnet protocol. And by doing that we can take a look at the different types of communications that were happening. So as you can see I can open this up and we can start looking at each packet. So Telnet, let's see here, Telnet, Telnet, look at that. Telnet, if we look in this window right here, you can see 
These are returns, user access verification, return new line, username, and if I go to the next packet, then the next one, and the next one, and the next one, next one, eventually we'll see something here. Data, A, D, M, I, N, admin. And then password, and we'll keep going down here, C, I, S, C, O, one, two, three, four, five. Each character is sent separately, each keystroke sent separately in a separate packet here, but you can just put them all together and you can see the entire situation. I could also take this Telnet communication and I'll take this packet and I'll say right click and choose follow TCP stream and we can see the whole thing right here user access verification username you can see here admin password Cisco 12345 then here's my enable command now the letters are a little funky here split into red and blue but we can see that the command was enable and the password was Dan's courses. We can also see the output from my show IP route command and the type of output that the router generated. Everything here was is uh, basically in plain text. So we learned that Telnet is not a very uh, secure protocol to use for remote administration. If someone happened to be eavesdropping on the network and picking up that data, they, it would reveal both my username, my password, and all the commands that I'm giving. So I'll close this and I'll close PuTTY and I'll execute the same scenario but this time I'll use SSH. So I'll press Capture, Interfaces, same connection, Start. I want to continue without saving the previous capture. I don't need to save all those packets so I'll say continue without saving. Um, I don't need also just the TCP stream, so I'll clear that so that we can see all types of communications here. And I'll open up PuTTY once again, except this time I'll use, instead of uh, Telnet, I'll use SSH, put in the IP address, and click Open. And I'll log in again as admin. And I'll use the same password, Cisco12345, gets me in, enable, and the password, Dan's courses, and then a command like show IP route. Now let's stop the capture. We've got all of our data here. You can see right here, SSH version two, the protocol, encrypted request packet. Well, let's first of all, let's filter for SSH, SSH, and click Apply. And so these are all the SSH packets. Key Exchange initialized. Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange, this is the key exchange. New keys, client keys. Encryption, AES-256. And we're looking to see if we can, here it is. So here is something sent from me to the router. Encrypted request packet. You can see here. I'm not going to be able to pick up any information here and figure out the usernames and passwords or anything like that. And if I go up to the top and I say, follow TCP stream, we can see in here that all of the messages, if we follow the stream, is entirely encrypted and I'm not going to be able to figure out exactly what types of information was sent across the network. That was SSH and Telnet. Now, what about FTP, File Transfer Protocol, and HTTP? 
So let's say I wanted to connect to an FTP server on the internet. So I just happen to have one here that we can use. So I'll open up a file Zilla connection to my web host, ftp.danscourses.com. I'll put in the user, test user at danscourses.com. I'll put in my password, Wireshark GR8. And this will be a port 21 connection to FTP. So before I connect though, I want to start capturing. So I'll say capture interfaces, except this time I'm going out to the internet. So I'm not gonna use the local area connection. I'm gonna use my wireless connection. So I'll select the wireless connection and press start. So now I'm capturing web traffic. There we go. Let's start our connection now. Quick connect. All right, it's connecting to my web host online and it already submitted my username and password and I can now examine the files on my web host. I'll stop the connection or stop the capture and I'll close my connection to my web host. There we go. And let's take a look at what we have. So here is the captured packets. As you can see, it's a ton of information. All we're interested in though is FTP. So FTP is the protocol I'm interested in. So I'll filter for FTP. And you can see right there, we don't have to look very far. Look at the second line. User, test user at danscourses.com. And then password, it says pass right here, Wireshark GR8. So there it is. Done. <laughs> well, that was quick. If we follow the TCP stream, you can see all of the information here. And uh, yeah, there you go. There's the username and password. So FTP is not secure. So what have we learned? We've learned that uh, Telnet's not uh, encrypted, not secure. SSH is encrypted, and that FTP is not encrypted. Now, what about HTTP traffic? If someone was eavesdropping on your network and they were sniffing packets, could they see the web pages that you were looking at? Absolutely, let's take a look. So, once again, I'll capture interfaces, and I'll capture my wireless network connection. I'll hit Start. Continue without saving, so now I'm capturing traffic. And let me clear this, because we don't want just that stream. Okay, so we don't want to filter yet. And open up a web browser, and I'll go to dalbergetti.com, my website. I know, because I have a simple picture here, so it's a good one to go to. And then I'll go to my website here, dancecourses.com. And I can hit a couple of pages, and I've got some images here. And there should be some graphics. There we go. All right, sounds good. So I'll stop the capture. And let's say I'm interested in the types of images that I happen to be looking at. Well. What I'll do is first I'll filter my captured data, all the different protocols and packets that I captured. This time I'm interested in HTTP traffic. So I'll click apply. These are my web requests. So I'm interested in, let's say maybe images that somebody's looking at. So I could say, and just scroll down and start looking for the types of files like JPEGs and PNG files and GIF files and things like that. Let's see if we can find one really quickly here. All right, there's a PNG request here. This is a PNG file here. This looks like it was from my website. Let's see if we can get that first image. 
there it is right here get this is the call to get my image from my website on the next line it says right here JPEG image so what it can do is is highlight this then I'll go down in the second window area and there is the JPEG file right here this is what I'm interested in so I'll just right click on this JPEG and I'll say export selected packet bytes and raw data and I'll just choose a name image 1 and I know it's a JPEG so I'll put dot JPG and save it to my desktop now I'll scroll down and look for some other images that we can take go here scroll down media type image JPEG export selected packet bytes image 2.jpg save here's a JPEG image right here JPEG file interchange format that looks good export image 3.jpg and this last one export selected packet bytes and I'll name this image 4.jpg and save it to the desktop so I have highlighted a couple of different images by looking for them here and exported them to the desktop. Let's take a look at what we found. So we'll go to the desktop and here are the images. Image 1, image 2, image 3, and image 4. So we'll just open this one first. There's the first image, right, right from my website, rebuilt from the packet capture. So we learned that if somebody was listening in on the network, they could pull the images and the type of information that you're viewing, the types of websites you're viewing, and all kinds of stuff if they were using a packet sniffing program. And you can see that none of that stuff is necessarily private or encrypted. Now, it's a good reason to think about when you should be using HTTPS, when you should be using an encrypted protocol and things like that. So it's uh, definitely something to think about. Well, anyway, I hope you liked the demonstration. You could try that for yourself. Just capture interfaces, choose the correct interfaces and click start and start capturing and then browse some web traffic. When you're done, press the stop button and then try to isolate some images like a JPEG image or a PNG file or a GIF file and then highlight like this one is a portable networks graphic so what you do is you highlight that and then export the selected packet bytes in this case this would be image 5.png since it's a PNG file so I'll hit save and save that and sure enough it's a tiny little image little icon but it is an image, right? PNG file. So it's the type of thing that you could have a lot of fun with. All you have to do is just start capturing one of your network, network interfaces and start generating some traffic by um, browsing the web.